Are mosquitoes the most annoying creatures on the planet? Or are they actually the most annoying creatures on the planet and something else? Welcome to Watch Mojo's Top 5 Facts. In today's installment, we're counting down the five most fascinating facts we could find about the sometimes pesky, sometimes pestilent little vampires known as mosquitoes. Number five, the war on mosquitoes is getting creative. Here you can see the laser strike, parts of the mosquito breaking off, and the body falling to the ground. Researchers have developed a variety of novel ways to lure, trap, and kill these little bloodsuckers. For one, researchers at James Cook University have zeroed in on the exact frequency of sound that attracts male mosquitoes, 448 hertz. They say this is the same frequency of the sound of female mosquitoes' wing beats, and they've created a trap that emits that tone. Scientists at Ohio State University have found a way to shut down mosquitoes' kidney-like organs. Down in Florida, they've discovered that traps that use black lights are more effective than fluorescent light traps. Because you know what I always say? Black light attack! What? Further south in Guatemala, Canadian researchers have had great success with this low-tech solution made from recycled materials. And another team from the USDA has seen encouraging results in luring mosquitoes to pesticides by mixing them with sugars. For a spoonful of sugar helps the pesticide go down. Number four, mosquitoes pee on you while they bite you. Yep, mosquitoes add a few hundred nanoliters of insult to the quasi-injury of their bites. When a female mosquito sinks her proboscis into your bloodstream, she gorges herself on the equivalent of her own body mass in blood. In order to make room for all that delicious red, she's got to get rid of all the excess water and salt in her body. So, yeah, she pees it out. Also, before and during feeding, she's injecting her saliva into you as an anticoagulant so your blood doesn't clog up her proboscis. Saliva, urine, blood, proboscis. I suddenly feel like we've got a very intimate relationship with mosquitoes. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed your first blood suck. Number three, mosquito factories could mean the end of malaria and dengue. Mosquitoes spread life-threatening infectious diseases like dengue fever, malaria, yellow fever, and Zika. According to the World Health Organization, there are 50 to 100 million cases of dengue fever every year. And for thousands of people, it is fatal. But by injecting a strain of bacteria into mosquito embryos that renders them immune to malaria and dengue, Scientists have created mosquitoes incapable of transmitting some of these diseases to humans. Best of all, this immunity is passed on genetically, so the trait gradually spreads through the gene pool. To speed up that process, so-called mosquito factories have been built in various countries around the world, including China and Brazil, that are capable of releasing millions of mosquitoes every week. Brazil implemented this program in, in 2011, and they saw over a six-month period, Don, that there was a 90% decrease in the mosquito population, which in turn means a decrease in dengue fever. New research has shown that this same bacteria, Wolbachia, could be used in the same way against Zika virus. Eventually, these diseases could be a thing of the past. Number two, genetic modification could eliminate mosquitoes completely. So you can go in and remove the species that are bad and, and then allow the species that, uh, that may have you know, no effect on humans to, to play out the role in the environment. And, and that some people call that playing God, I, I call it good management. So why have malaria-free mosquitoes when you could just have no mosquitoes? In 2014, scientists from the Imperial College London created a genetic method that causes Anopheles gambii mosquitoes, the main transmitters of malaria, to produce almost entirely male offspring, resulting in a Krogan genophage type situation. So your people were infected with a genetic mutation? An infection that makes only a few in a thousand children survive birth? And I suppose it's destroying your entire species? Recent advancements have made this strategy even more effective, rendering the offspring of the modified mosquitoes completely sterile, or giving them really short lifespans. Well, what we've shown in Brazil is that um, within a six-month period, we can reduce the population of mosquitoes, this particular one that spreads dengue, chikungunya, and Zika, by over 90% within six months. Scientists say that even with mosquito factories creating GM mosquitoes, it would be a long, difficult process, but in theory, a world without the number one entry on WatchMojo's list of the top 10 most annoying insects is tenable. So what are we waiting for? Well, the thing is, number one, nobody knows what the side effects of mosquito extinction would be. 
Earth is a protected wildlife reserve? Yeah, we've been using it to rebuild the mosquito population, which, need I remind you, is an endangered species. Yes, being responsible for the death of one million people every year makes them the most deadly animal on the planet, but they are part of their ecosystems nevertheless. Mosquitoes all over you. Got about 15 mosquitoes, one swat. Ecologists have learned the hard way that removing one element from an ecosystem can have disastrous knock-on effects. Removing problematic predators like wolves, for instance, can allow prey species like deer to overpopulate, leading to a loss of plant diversity, which leads to other problems, and so on. But here's where it gets really interesting. The wolves changed the behavior of the rivers. However, unlike in that example, it's apparently tough for ecologists to agree on any useful niche that makes skeeters indispensable. Yes, they pollinate plants, but other bugs could do that in their place. Yes, larger animals eat them, but except at high northern latitudes, they don't make up a significant portion of any one species' diet. In Alaska, swarms of mosquitoes can get so thick that they actually asphyxiate caribou. But those experts could be wrong, and the results could be disastrous. Perhaps, as science writer David Quammen suggests, the one thing that really makes mosquitoes indispensable is the fact that they are so dangerous to humans. According to Quammen, the largest impediment to colonizing or clearing equatorial rainforests has always been a hyperabundance of mosquitoes. And in the first eight years of constructing the Panama Canal, some 20,000 people died of mosquito-borne diseases. So, what do you think? Should we eliminate all mosquitoes and deal with the aftermath then? Can we not simply destroy the island? No! Crazy head! The mosquitoes' food of choice, primitive humanoid life forms have colonies all over that planet! For more useful niche top tens and screwed by the Solarians top fives published daily, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. I don't expect you to understand, but don't compare humanity's fate with the Krogan.